Right now, the greatest reward for being the pastor of Midtree Church is that there are so many things that are outside of my ability and outside of my hands that it forces me to go to the Lord and it reminds me every time he shows up how real he is, how present he is, and how much he loves me. And I know that, that can sound like a very sort of self-oriented answer, but if I know that God knows all of my stuff and he's entering into it and he loves me, that's the kind of hope and message that I would wanna tell other people. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, God knows, he cares, he enters in. I mean, that's the message of the gospel. That's the message of Jesus. My name is Will Hawk. I am the pastor of Midtree Church. I'm also a husband and a father to four kids, three boys and one girl. It sounds cliche. One of my favorite things to do when I'm not being a pastor is be a dad. Um, I, I, I don't think it's because I read my Bible more or I love Jesus. But I just love my kids. I, I love, and, and ever since I was a teenager, um, I like working in kids ministry and working at summer camps and. I just love hanging out with kids. I think deep down inside of me, I will always be a kid that never really wants to grow up. And so one of my favorite things to do is uh, goof around with the kids. Today, Monday is sort of like a traditional pastor day off. And so uh, we had a four square tournament um, that, that we did this morning. A couple of weeks ago, we went and played kickball outside of my children. I take my wife on a date, uh, try to just about every Monday night, which is also one of my favorite things to do. And then, um, it, it would be hard to answer that systematically other than that because I only like doing things I've never done before. And so I, my system is to do something, but what I do, it, it's always changing up. I kind of grew up in the church, loved it, fell in love with it. I'll tell you when I really fell in love with it. I was 12 years old and a buddy of mine invited me to be a part of a summer camp. And so I show up, it's an orientation, and the dude doesn't show up. And so I, I'm kind of like, well, my mom has already left me. We didn't have cell phones back then, so I was just stuck. And, and so I see it as providence that God put me in that situation and uh, in a sense guided my steps there. I ended up going and becoming a counselor of a ministry that taught the gospel to underprivileged kids. And I did that every summer for all of my teenage life and realized I love the Bible, I love teaching the Bible, I love seeing people fall in love with the Bible. And since then, it just sort of exploded. Local parachurch ministries was on uh, staff at a number of churches and then felt like the Lord was calling me to plant a church. And so that's what we did a couple of years ago. Uh, Midtree Church is a church uh, based around the precepts of the gospel that God cared enough about man to send himself uh, to, to make a way so that broken and sinful man could be reunited with a perfect and a holy God. That I think is church. Midtree would be a local expression of that in Harris County, Georgia. We're a little bit different maybe than a, a traditional Southern Baptist church in the sense that um, we are, are our theology is very orthodox, uh, sort of old school theology with a new school methodology. Um, we are, are hopefully going to be meeting uh, in, in an outdoor space. We believe a lot in community. We believe uh, heavily in um, not just the traditionalism of religion, but knowing people, being known by people, and God meeting us there where we are and changing us more into the image of His Son. So typically with a church plant, when, when you take a group of people, we were at a church called Cross Point in Columbus, Georgia. They were sending us with about 65 folks. You sort of feel like, all right, we know where we're gonna go. We're gonna head that way. And then we'll kind of figure out things from there. Well, we leave Cross Point and two weeks before our first Sunday, we're supposed to be at a school and the school calls us and they say, no deal, we've had you know regulations and things on the school board change, so you're not gonna be able to meet there anymore. And we start trying to figure out, well, what are we gonna do if we can't meet if we can't meet there, what, what's going to happen? And an elderly couple in Ellerslie, Georgia, heard about it. They'd been praying for decades that a church would meet at their farm and restaurant, and our home became a farm. Uh, there were chickens that walked around. There was a donkey off to the side that loved to talk while I was preaching or praying. And it was really bizarre, and it's not what you would usually want or raise your hand for in a church plant, but it was perfect. It, it 
It was a non-traditional venue where we could talk about the goodness of God in the creation that He had made. And so uh, we loved it. We really fell in love with it. Uh, the county, after a while, the church was growing a little bit and they didn't like us meeting outdoors in that kind of a way in a regular sense. Our church got, gets sent all the way out to Pine Mountain at Impact 360, which is Chick-fil-A's gap year program. Uh, we're there for a little bit of time and we think, okay, we found our spot, we're gonna chill out. And then next thing we know, COVID hit. So we lose that. We start recording in my home. Uh, and, and then we move from there to Christ Community Church uh, in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, while we're doing that, we're also trying to purchase and develop this property. In fact, I was just on the phone earlier today talking to a pastor of another church in the event that we have to move again. And so I would say it's been a very atypical adventure, but exactly what I think the Lord had in mind for us as we were forced to become a people who trusted in Him when our situation uh, didn't necessarily look perfect. It's caused us to have um, a group of people who are gritty and a group of people who are faithful, and that's what you wanna base a church on. So it's been perfect. I think you can go a lot of places and find religion. I think you can go a lot of places um, and sort of find a, a, a philosophy or a worldview of how to see the world. But one of the things that I think makes the Bible so compelling and, and specifically Jesus so compelling is that he was a real person who really loved real people. And so my hope is that if somebody visited, they would feel like they were able to be themselves, that they didn't need to hide who they actually were because the Bible already knows and God already knows, but they could enter into this pack of people who are unashamedly pursuing God, unashamedly pursuing knowing who he is, and that allows them to be honest about who they are, the struggles that they're in, what's going on to develop this community of honesty, intimacy, and growth. That's what I would hope. I think people can do similar things for very different reasons. Um, I, I'm a pastor because I feel like I'm called to be a pastor. And the word pastor in the Bible is synonymous with shepherd, which means your expectation is you are gonna be leading people. And all throughout the Bible, what we see is that God calls leaders to lead people through very difficult things, recognizing that it is for their good. And so with every little thing that just didn't seem to work or make sense, as long as I was able to realize that God is going to use difficulty significantly more than he's going to use comfort, it makes it very easy to lead when you get that. Now, the kicker of it is I don't always operate that way. Like a lot of times, you know, the school calls and they're like, you're not gonna be able to meet there. Yeah, there's a day where you're like, God, what is happening? And where you're frustrated or you're worried and you're trying to figure out how you're gonna communicate to people. Um, when, when you find out that COVID hits and everybody else at least has a building and they're just figuring out what they're gonna do in a building. You don't even have a building. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to lead this group of people that are trusting me to lead them well when I'm just some mid 30 year old dude who's trying to figure it out and, and praying his way along. But I, I think that's the best part of the adventure. You know, if if God gave me a script and said, here's the beginning and here's the end, then what, what's the fun in that? What's the enjoyment in that? I get to every day wake up and say, okay, Lord, what do you have for us today? And not knowing tomorrow makes today, in my opinion, so much better, so much more exciting, and, and it increases my dependence on Him. And even though if you were to ask me in a moment like that, it'd be easy to say, yeah, I would love to trade that for security and stability. Now, if a week went by, I would pass up security and stability anytime for having to trust God through something unexpected. It's better, it's way better.